sounds of Cambridgeshire. Breakfast with Louise Holland. Everything you need to start your day. BBC Radio Cambridgeshire. Good morning, it's 12 minutes past nine. This is Louise on BBC Radio Cambridgeshire. Happy Friday. Now, I know everyone is so excited about the return of football tomorrow, but do you know what I'm looking forward to? As well as the return of Strictly, one of my favourite highlights of the year is the proms. And speaking of the proms, do you recognise by any chance these fingers and maybe feet? Cambridge organist and very good friend of BBC Radio Cambridgeshire, the incredibly and unfairly, frankly, talented Anna Lapwood at the console there. Now, Anna's been chosen to grace the stage of the proms this year, playing the organ at the Royal Albert Hall. Wow. In celebration of its 150th anniversary, the proms will showcase the venue's organ across five concerts. Anna is going to be performing Saint-Saëns Organ Symphony with the Halle Orchestra. The Halle. Um, And along with making her proms debut, she's also just released a a brand new album. I mean, of course she has. Uh, Anna, good morning. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Um, I'm surprised you've got the time to join us. You've got so much going on. <laughs> it has been quite hectic. Yeah, I mean, that's been one of the, the good things about the last year anyway, is we've all had a little bit more time uh, to practice and do things like that. But yeah, it, it, it's a bit busy at the moment. Now, the proms starts in exactly a month. It's one of my favourite points in the calendar. Are you more nervous than excited or more excited than nervous? Because I can imagine it's, it's quite the honour, isn't it? But also a little bit terrifying. It is a little bit nerve wracking. Um, I think I'm more excited at the moment. I mean, the piece is one that I know really well. And it's a great piece in that you, well, you sit there for a, about 15 minutes listening to the orchestra before you even come in. And so I think, to be honest, when it gets to the actual day, I'll just be sitting there going, oh, my gosh, they sound so great. And just kind of reveling in the whole experience. So, yeah, I am quite excited. Now, you see, I'm a bit of a dolly daydream, man. I'd be quite worried that if I was you, I'd spend, spend so long daydreaming whilst the orchestra playing i'd miss my cue you know what i mean uh that is one of the dangers with this piece because there's a lot of counting bars rest so a lot of my practice is actually kind of listening along with the score and picking out the bits that i need to listen to so that i don't miss my entry (laughs) now i don't mean to be a name dropper but i'm gonna do it i am very close personal friends in real life with the proms's very own queen of the proms uh katie derham is, oh, lovely. Yes. Is everybody being nice to you? Because if they're not, I shall feed back. I want to make sure that you're being treated like a goddess. <laughs> oh, Katie's <laughs> wonderful. And she's been really supportive, actually, because I, I'm also doing my first bit of TV presenting for the proms this year. Uh, and she's been brilliant at kind of giving me little tips and, uh, yeah, just welcoming me into the family. So now we've got a news editor who works here called Keith. And every time we've been talking about uh, the organ here at the, well, the Royal Albert Hall, he keeps giving me this fact. And I really should have remembered it because he's told me about 11 times. Is it something, there's something like 9,999 pipes on that organ? That is correct. Yeah, we were talking about this yesterday. It's I love it because they could have made it 10,000, <laughs> but they didn't. They went just... to 9,000. Yeah. It's almost a little bit passive aggressive, isn't it? I don't quite know why, but I feel like somebody was making a point. But I guess it means that people remember it. I mean, Keith was saying that he's remembered it for two weeks and he doesn't (laughs) usually remember facts for that long, apparently. Um, So tell us about preparation, because we know, obviously, you're an incredible organist, but there's going to be something different, I would imagine, playing in the Royal Albert Hall. Do they give you plenty of time to go in and get used to the organ and get used to the sound and the acoustics and if things are in different places? Yeah, well, I mean, one of the biggest things of being an organist is that you have to go and sort of set up the sounds that you want on a specific organ before you play. And it's always difficult getting practice time, particularly at the album or particularly in prom season. So you often end up being given a practice slot sort of in the middle of the night. I think two Ooh. till six in the morning is a quite common <laughs> one. Uh, but it's great because when else would you get that hall to yourself and be able to fill it with whatever sound you want? 
it's just an incredibly magical place, isn't it? Did you ever think that this would happen for you in terms of such an honour? I mean, I'm sure it was a goal, but did you ever think it was a goal that would be realistic? Not at all. I mean, I remember playing at the Bronze when I was younger in the National Youth Orchestra and it was always the highlight of my year because it's an atmosphere unlike any other concert hall and unlike any other audience. You're so close to the audience. But I don't think I ever thought that I'd be performing as a soloist. And in fact, I got the call on April Fool's Day. Um, and my, man- <laughs> no. my manager rang me. Yeah, my manager <laughs> rang me and she said, Anna, I've got some news for you. And I just thought she was pulling my leg. I thought there's no way this is true. I, if I'd have been you, I think I, I think I might fire that manager. I mean, I could imagine the palpitations <laughs> thinking that couldn't be real. So, I, obviously, you know, you're the director of music at Pembroke College here in Cambridge. Beautiful, beautiful college. How does the Royal Albert Hall compare, though? Because I can imagine it's easier to be intimate and enjoy the moment in those smaller venues. It is, although I think that's one of the wonderful things about the Albert Hall, in a way, is that you can capture a sense of intimacy i mean you're if you're playing in an orchestra you're uh, in touching distance of the promise and if you're when you're playing the organ you've got people in the audience sitting really quite close to you so yes you have this sense of an amazing vast space and it would be lovely to hear a sort of full hall again but you also feel like you're incredibly close to everyone there because of the circular layout it's just stunning. I'm so excited for you. Apart from the proms, though, you've also got a new album out. Uh, we've heard a bit of a snippet. Let's hear a little bit more. So that's the four C interludes. It's called The Storm, which you can actually tell when you think about it. Um, Glenn and I were having a chat earlier, Anna, um, about how fast your fingers and feet were moving playing that. I mean, you must just have very, very <laughs> agile fingers to, to, to knock out the music that quickly. It is. It's quite a fast one, that one. And that's part of the fun of it, actually. And yeah, you're right. It, the Britain really does conjure up this image of a storm. I mean, it's set, the, the opera where that, that that's from, Peter Grimes, is sort of set on the Suffolk coast. And I think most of us who've been to Suffolk can really imagine <laughs> the sea kind of swelling and the wind and the rain and the cold. It's, it's great music. So what can we expect from your new album then? So much choice, I guess, for you to, to think about and play with and decide. Yeah, I think for me, I wanted to use it as an opportunity to show the versatility of the organ, because I think we all think about the organ and we think, oh, big, bombastic playing hymns and kind of playing the big famous pieces, the very loud ones. But actually, it's an instrument with an extraordinary capacity for beauty and quiet playing, which we heard sort of at the beginning of, or with the Messiaen that you played at the start. And so I've tried to showcase that. So we've got the Messiaen, we've got some beautiful Debussy and Ravel, which shows very sensitive and also quite playful side of the organ uh, and then we've got the Brit- uh, Britain 4C interludes and a transcription that I actually wrote myself um, specifically to show quite how much the organ can do and how it ca- can replicate the sounds of an orchestra and can be just as evocative and exciting and sensitive. And where did you record it? Was it at Pembroke? It was at Ely actually. <gasps> oh wow beautiful beautiful so freezing me, cold oh, yeah yeah, it, yeah. i mean yeah. i feel like that always kind of just goes without saying really doesn't it, in cathedrals so anna when is the album out when can we get it and when can we see you at the proms so it's all happening in the same week i haven't oh. given myself an easy beginning of september uh, so the album comes out on the 3rd of september uh but you can pre-order it now and a couple of singles are already out uh and then the Sansons is on the 7th of September and then I'll be presenting the Matthew Passion on the 10th of September. Busy, busy, busy. Anna, it's been a pleasure to chat to you. Thank you for taking time out of your day, especially when it's so busy to come and talk to us. (laughs) (laughs) And we'll see you soon, I'm sure. That's the lovely Anna Lapwood there. It is 9.21.